A co-rotating vortex pair has notably different characteristics to a counter-rotating vortex pair, but it's still an equally as applicable phenomenon. Today we'll go through the details of their migrations, flow fields, and consequent merging mechanisms. Now, in any co-rotating vortex pair, the total circulation will not equal zero, so there will be an inherent rotation of the structures. So firstly, considering two equal strength vortices, the inner sides of the vortices both shear harder than the outer, causing them to rotate on the same radii about the same point. In the case of two unequal strength vortices, the stronger will circulate at a smaller radius to the larger, where they'll both circulate about the same point. The extent of circulation difference between the pairs actually affects the type of merge present. A small difference in circulation could give you an equal or a partial merger, where large differences in circulation could give you a partial or a complete strain, where straining, uh, we lose more total circulation. In a strain, the vortex is elongated, then its vorticity eroded. So for maximum circulation or minimum circulation loss, you'd want to combine similar sized vortices together, as opposed to feeding one very large system with a small vortex. Now looking into an equal merger in more detail, we find four critical stages. As a disclaimer, it's difficult to produce two perfectly co-rotating vortex systems right next to each other. However, this CFD gives a general representation of a partial merger and some of the mechanisms at play. The first diffusive stage occurs as the vortices rotate around each other but do not get closer together. The convective stage represents the bulk of the merging process, where the vortices deform, causing asymmetry and a rapid decrease in the separation between the vortices. It's in this stage that the maximum lateral velocity, and hence change in separation, is seen. The second diffusive stage is where our vortices are considered fully merged, as their core locations are the same. And finally, the merged diffusive stage begins to deform the structure from an ellipse to a circle. So during the convective stage, what actually drives the two cores together? Well, to investigate further, you need to look at the flow field, where we can see a saddle region in the center and an outer circulation. However, this is drawn in a fixed frame. Since the vortices are rotating about each other, it's actually more beneficial to draw them in a co-rotating frame. Clearly, now there are many more regions of interest the inner core region, the inner recirculation region, the ghost vortex, and the outer region. Note that it seems like the outer region is actually rotating in a different direction, but don't forget this is in a co-rotating reference frame. During the merge, the saddle region diminishes and the ghost vortex begins adding asymmetry through filaments on the upper left and lower right. So why is this so important? Well, if you extracted the symmetrical flow field, you'd notice that there aren't actually any vectors which are pushing the cores together. That's all done through anti-symmetry. And the anti-symmetric flow field shows two counter-rotating vortex pairs which are actually driving the cores together. So this is the physical mechanism behind which co-rotating vortices merge. Furthermore, by looking at the total circulation in terms of symmetric and anti-symmetric components, it's found that during the convective stage, anti-symmetry is created, and thus is the defining characteristic behind the merger. And any excess anti-symmetry post-merge will be captured by the main region in its merged diffusive stage. So in this video, we went through some of the interactions between a co-rotating vortex pair, and I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video.